In this section, we're going to do a deeper dive into the technical details behind Green Button, and the slides to support this section are found at energy.gov slash developer. So in this section, we're going to look at some of the tools to support developers working on Green Button. I'd like to start with a little bit more detail about the standardization behind Green Button and then go into the software development kit and some of the other resources available to you. This is a key part of the Green Button. By working from a standardized base, the Priority Action Plan 10 work that was done within the North American Energy Standards Board, having that initial seed standard to support energy usage information provides a way to model the information that will be available via Green Button and other channels, such as, for example, straight from the meter, in the environment of a home or business or industrial facility in the end. If you look at all of the different needs for energy usage information, we took a information modeling approach to look at the needs from the various communities, the residential community, as well as the building and industrial communities, and working with the utilities, help to organize this information in a way that will support multiple applications by all of these interested parties. One of the key parts to this is that this modeling was done in UML, and then that UML supported a development of XML and XML schema in a full information model representation of energy usage information. One of the key central points to this is the usage point. So energy usage occurs at a usage point and then consists of information on the interval data or the readings, the meter readings. So there's this flow through to the meter reading and then it gets into interval blocks and readings. At the same time, that usage point in meter reading is characterized by the type of reading that it is. In addition to this guts of the information, kind of this you know, energy usage information by interval blocks, there's also the ability to report summary information that may be very important to a facility manager or a residential consumer who wants to view the information in its aggregate at a top level. If you look at the types of information that is available within energy usage information, it's not only electricity data, it's all energy usage information. Working within the North American Energy Standards Board, there's both the gas industries and the electric sector industries there. And with the input from a broader community, we were able to generalize the concepts between, behind energy usage information. So for example, the standards can support measurements of power, energy, gas, water, and other quantities. And it's organized in such a way that there is this t kinds of data, so there's the readings, the interval data, and the summary information, but all of that data is described by the dimensions of the data. So this gets into the ability to say that the data was raw data, for example, straight from a meter, or validated data. This would be data that goes through the utility back-end systems and is uh, established as being accurate. Or from a modeling point of view, it might be estimated data. All of these different types of data, those attributes are able to be described within the energy usage model. In addition, the source of the data could come from the meters in near real time, or the utility back end, or from a third party. Consumers need to know the cost of their usage, However, what we did within the energy usage information was we treated that at a summary level. So we associated a cost with an interval, and we did not get into the details of the pricing model, which is being done in other places. Some of the examples of green button data are everything from hourly load profile data to 15-minute interval data to even your simple monthly bill, that energy usage from the billing data. So you do not have to have a smart meter in order to get access to green button data. If you have a smart meter, it might be very valuable to get that more detailed data in 15 minute increments or hour increments and provide you the information that you can make decisions on. But all of these different types of information are all supported by Green Button. With respect to the ability to do gas and water profiles, while those have not been implemented immediately for Green Button, the underlying standardization supports their use in the future. Here are some tools that we have available in our software developers kit to support Green Button. 
And I won't go into all of these details here, but the web links will be available to you through the presentation. Now we're going to go into some of the tools that are available and look at the green button file in more detail. One of the things that we were doing here was we were creating a file format standardization that supported both the consumer's engagement with the data as well as, most importantly, the ability to share this data in machine-to-machine -machine format with web app developers in an XML-based format that they would be able to upload and do useful things with. Here are the different parts of the file that helped us accomplish this. There's the XML schema that underlies the data that provides the rules for the details of the file format. There's the XML itself, which contains the data in the standard file format. And there's also an XSLT that defines how to transform the data so that it's readable by humans. If you look at the types of energy usage information that you might obtain, there's different potential uses. One use is a single data format, where a customer goes to their utility website and downloads an entire year's worth of data all at once in one big file. Then they can take that very detailed usage. If, for example, interval data is available at our intervals, such as the first implementers in California have done, then that full information could be very useful to support a variety of applications. In addition, thinking for the longer term, there's the ability to look at this data as a sequence of data in time so that as you have consumers that are engaging with their information on a more regular basis day by day, perhaps looking at the day before interval data, or ideally looking at near real time data straight from a meter in the future, that sequential data would be very important to support their ongoing and real time actions to conserve energy. All of these different types of energy usage information are supported by the underlying standards. So we have a broad range of sources of energy usage information. We have a data format that can both handle one-time downloads as well as in the future support more regular downloads. And we have a variety of usage of energy information by consumers. If you look into the details of the schema, the web app developers all have their favorite ways of looking at this data. Here we show three different views, and you can pick your favorite one. It kind of shows you that this is the form that you would expect it to be in with the information you would expect it to have and in a very organized fashion. If you look in detail at the XML file, there's all of the different attributes that I talked about before, the usage point, the meter reading, the interval, interval block, the reading type, etc in the file organized as such with a lot of the XML organization of it done through this linkage structure uh, that relates the data elements and the relationship with each other in the context of the overall XML schema. Here's a, a picture in which we look in detail at the interval block. So there's a interval time definition and these interval readings have values, costs, and reading quality as well as optional time periods. An important thing to note is that the schema that we've been developing for Green Button and ESPY, the standard source for it, can be extended to support other things as well. Here we're drilling into the electric power usage summary in order to be able to see all of the different types of summary information that might be of value to a consumer in the Green Button format. Here we get into the details of a sample XSLT, which shows how the information is pointed to from the uh, file to allow its display in an HTML file that the consumer can read. In this, we have a style sheet at the top of the file that identifies the source for that XSLT. And there's also a line that shows the XSD schema location. Another useful thing that we've done is develop a file generator. We know that web app developers are going to want to play with the data. In addition to the Department of Energy making available different sample files for Green Button, we also have a spreadsheet-based system that is able to be worked with in order to 
kick out files with different types of data with different intervals and blocks of time and put in simulated data. So this is a useful tool as you're getting up and running to have something that you can put play with and control and spit out files that you can then do useful things with. If you look at some of the reference implementations and the developer communities that are interested in Green Button. One of them is OpenSB, and here is some information about how they view the world and what their contribution to Green Button is. This kind of shows their software architecture. All of these things will be familiar to you. And here's a visual representation of how they you know, look at, at things and how they've organized. One of the important things that they've done is develop a virtual machine environment to help jumpstart your development efforts. The website for this virtual machine is found at www.openSB.org backslash vm.html. And this virtual machine connects to their remote repository and all of the development tools, web servers, and test tools are incorporated into this. On this slide, I show the green button graphics that are available for your use. The original source of the graphics was through the Veterans Administration. We had copied what Blue Button did for healthcare, there they were taking healthcare data from veterans and making it available to the veterans in electronic formats. They coined the phrase Blue Button and put together a trademark supporting it, a Blue Button Download My Data. We worked with the VA in order to help promote the use of Green Button data, and with their permission, which was obtained through a comfort letter, uh, to support the lawyers and others interested in making sure that we do this right. We have got permission to use Green Button and their mark in conjunction with the energy space. Here I'm going to talk about the path forward. In essence, we've been talking about many of the tools that are available, but the most important resource is people and the communities that will help Green Button progress. We'd like to continue to accelerate the development of these tools and build a user community to support Green Button. Green Button can be thought of as an umbrella. There's the policy aspects to Green Button and what it wants to accomplish. There's the branding of Green Button and what it is. There's been a lot of publicity for Green Button, so there's a, a growing awareness of what it is and what its usefulness is. And then there's a collection of technologies to support Green Button, such as the technical standards as well as the test plans and certifications. All of these help to support a common positive environment for the consumers to have some regularity when they get Green Button data, they'll have some expectations as to what it will include and what its usefulness will be. Going forward, we would like to invite you to contribute to the discussion and also give you pathways to provide comments and discussion. On this particular slide, it shows how open source information can support commercial development of Green Button. On the next slides, we're going to go through a variety of websites that have entry points for you for specific details on Green Button. This slide shows an entry point to the SGIP and NIST collaboration wiki in which Green Button artifacts are collected. Here is the page for the North American Energy Standards Board for the SB standards. This is for you to be able to get access to these standards, which NASB will provide. They provide a developer's welcome kit, uh, but over the long term, you also need to purchase the standard from NASB. Here we have the UCA IUG users group supporting uh, Green Button. And as you can see, they're uh, uh, working towards uh, improving and uh, the test plans to support Green Button. Here is the openei.org uh, site that shows some Green Button applications. So it's a, an initial repository for some of the apps that you and others uh, are developing. Here is the OpenSB website that provides the entry point to get plugged into the developer community behind Green Button. And here are some more details getting into the uh, OpenSB uh, uh, site and providing the place where a lot of the good information is, is, is kept. If you're interested in providing comments and identify issues for the Green Button community to help address, here are two entry points. One is related to the NASB standards, the test plans, and the branding of Green Button. And then the development of the impl reference implementation and tools is the second. And here is a, a much 
longer list of links for a variety of different entry points for Green Button. One in particular that I want to reinforce is the www.greenbuttondata.org site. This is both the consumer-facing website as well as providing significant developer resources off of the developer tab of it. So that's a good place to remember as an initial entry point. So with that, we've gone through a lot of technical details about Green Button and all of its different aspects, and we're interested in working with the web app community to further support the development of Green Button, and in particular through the Apps for Energy contest, be able to see what exciting and creative applications you all will develop. Please don't forget to sign up for updates at appsforenergy.challenge.gov. Again, I'm Dave Wallman from NIST, and thank you very much for watching.